most eventful year. Spain's three-year-old civil war ends, and Generalissimo Franco enters Barcelona. The victorious Nationalist Army passes in review. Brother no longer fights brother, as once again the sky is clear in war-weary Spain that rises from its sorrow to begin life anew. Aviation reaches new heights. The Atlantic becomes a small ocean, only a day's journey from the new world to the old, as the Yankee Clippers inaugurate regular mail and passenger flights between the two hemispheres. With eight transport pilots and every modern safety device, the Clipper wings its way high above the clouds and beyond the reach of angry seas. Passengers enjoy modern comfort as the short hours pass pleasantly. A safe landing from its lofty path above the sea lanes that once was sailed by the Clippers of old. Great day for London, as King George and Queen Elizabeth return from the historic journey to the New World. The humble and the great join in an historic ovation. The same royal carriage in which they rode away now carries them back to Buckingham Palace. Their loyal subjects see them at home again, grateful for their safe return. France, too, has an occasion of rejoicing. Bastille Day is celebrated with the greatest parade in French history. Britain's soldiers join in the march as Paris thrills to a display of allied power. France celebrates the 150th birthday of its freedom. Colonial troops of North Africa demonstrate their loyalty, and millions respond with loud cheers of Vive la France! The Arc de Triomphe looks down again on marching troops as France and Britain's defenders march together, not knowing that destiny will soon again join them as allies in armed conflict. Nature goes on a rampage and leaves destruction and havoc in its wake. Here in the heart of the earthquake zone, untold thousands of buildings topple in ruin as great crevices are split in the earth. Soldiers search for those who perished in Chile's tragic disaster. Twenty cities are laid low as houses crumble like broken crackers. President Serda inspects the devastated area as with heavy heart, the natives start to rebuild their stricken country. The United States Navy suffers a tragic disaster. A drama of sorrow is written when the submarine sprayless plunges to the bottom of the sea off the North Atlantic coast. The staunch rescue ship Falcon speeds from its base, and the work of saving the gallant crew gets underway. A new type of rescue bell goes into action as divers and Navy experts strive frantically to reach the trapped officers and men. After many nerve-straining minutes, the rescue bell is raised, and with it come 33 of the crew but 26 are trapped in the flooded compartment. Then with huge pontoons and pumps, three attempts are made to raise the ill-fated submarine. Finally, the surface boils as the ship rises, and a tragic sea epic is sadly written in the history of a nation. Japan continues its undeclared war against China and creates acute diplomatic tension by barricading the British concession at Tinsin. For a time, the entry of foodstuffs is prohibited. Sentry control is established. <laughs> Unrest in the Far East continues as nations and peoples await the inevitable solution.
Twenty two contributes to China's man made trouble. One of the worst floods in Cathay's history devastates the already sorely tried Tinsing to inundate its streets and make thousands homeless. The four horsemen have always ridden roughshod over China, but she always seems to survive, for her people smile at disaster, believing that the waters will again recede as the tense struggle to live goes on. Cupid has his problems too, and in Canada he solves them in a wholesale way. Here in Montreal, over a hundred couples gather in the open to be married simultaneously. And they will live happily ever after. Obviously, there is some love left in the worried world of today. Germany invades Poland in the free state of Danzig. The efforts and hopes of diplomats for peaceful settlement are transformed into the roar of gunfire. Warsaw is bombed, blasted, and shelled. Poland is in ruin. Great Britain and France declare war on Germany. Huge French guns move to the front, and its army to the great man-made Maginot Line, the nation's first bulwark of defense. Britain safely transports a quarter of a million officers and men across the English Channel to France's shore. The Allies' greatest weapon to wipe out forever the recurrent fear of aggression lies in their domination of the sea. One of the worst conflagrations of the year takes place in Chicago where men's common enemy strike with flaming ferocity. Huge grain elevators burst into white-hot infernos as brave firefighters strive to quench the flames with tons of water. Millions of dollars go up in smoke. Hundreds of cattle are menaced. The surrounding buildings are left black and charred. South America go United States naval cruisers and a goodwill voyage of peacetime activity. We're aboard the USS San Francisco, looking back at the sturdy warship, plowing Cape Horn's heavy seas and riding out the gale's fury. The waves pound mercilessly against these ocean greyhounds as the wind reaches hurricane velocity. Mountainous seas seem to completely submerge the ships as they plow through the raging main, conquering the angry waters and headed for safe harbors ahead. The bulldogs of the Navy forge onward in Neptune's turbulent waters, symbols of the might of right in a world of heavy seas.